I need to come up with better names for my USB drives. The Wacky World of Multimedia J. Some of the changes that I've made to support this year's April Fool's jokes are going to confuse folks until time and space catches up. Or something like that. Like flipping the calendar a little early. So, with what I know about tech video stuff, and the fact that the problems with the tech videos are not just on my channel, but it's a genre-wide thing across many channels on YouTube, I just have to remind you folks before we get into this experiment, if you use an ad blocker, whitelist YouTube or whitelist tech channels, because when I compare tech to non-tech at the same channel size, it actually seems like tech video folks are getting held back by the thing I've mentioned with the numbers and the ad blockers. Now you may not agree with what YouTube is doing, you may not agree at all with how they choose to run this platform, but because of the way it's set up, you cannot rebel against YouTube without catching creators in the crossfire. And that's what I'm seeing with a lot of tech channels right now. When I compare them to non-tech channels with the same size and the same frequency of uploading content and the same fan base, I same size fan base anyways, I keep seeing tech, you know, tech channels falling behind. And I have to wonder if this ad block thing, because of a more techy, a tech savvy audience, is why this is happening. Now let's get on to the good news. I know that Android x86 has moved forward into the Oreo era, so since I can't find anything else to do with rubbish over here, I want to see if the Android x86 version for Oreo is any better than the previous ones in terms of getting these old computers to function properly. First thing we need to do though is Rufus over Gparted, because this thing is an old netbook from 2012. Let's Rufus Gparted onto that little 8 gig thumbstick, and let's blow away all the partitions on the drive, or SSD. <laughs> Although, with the way this thing works, it's usually a waste of an SSD. Alright, let's see what this experience is like nowadays. Rufus has changed a little since the last time I used it. But let's see if this was... I think only one of these ports was bootable. Blinky blinky. It's good. Nope. Went straight into Windows 10. On the other side, I think it was just this one over on this side all by itself that was actually bootable. Or do we have to invoke the actual boot menu? The biggest thing, if I remember right... What do we have here? There we go. Uh, and it's going to both screens. This is what the issue is going to be when uh, when Android x86 is installed. Because I remember the big issue is that Android devices only have one screen, but I want the option of being able to close the lid on this thing and use it as an Android console. Now, where I stand with Android x86 nowadays, I don't have high hopes for the project at all. I think that real mobile devices are going to blow this out of the water <laughs> at some point, and the only use for this will be very niche, like keeping old computers relevant in some way, shape, or form. But if this can ever work, it would actually be pretty neat. Alright, don't touch the key map. We want US English. We want US English, and just use a G-Part on that. This is the newest version of G-Part anyways. So... With how low of an impact on the CPU this is, I'm still using the x86 one for compatibility reasons, but it's not an issue to reflash the USB drive over and over again. So, for those of you who are not familiar with Rubbish, Windows 7 era netbook... <laughs> yeah, Windows 7 era netbook circa 2012. It has never been a good computer. It was built for battery life first and performance second, but its specs with its 4 gigs of RAM and its dual core processor are still in mobile device territory, so that's why I keep foolishly trying to get Android x86 working on this thing. Uh-oh. I see some Linux issues. I've got icons on one screen, and I've got... Oh no, it's, it, it, it detected both displays automatically. It just, it's using uh, extended desktop mode to put the program on one screen and the icons on the other. Hasta la vista, Windows! Apologies if you can hear a really low rumbling in the background. We had some genius who drives a diesel pickup truck move in that likes to idle his truck for like a half hour before he goes anywhere. I went outside last time he did this just to see who it was, if it was anybody I knew, and he was blasting Nickelback. So there ends that discussion. <laughs> Let's get some Android x86 over here. Okay, we're done. You just get a little prompt and that's it for x86-64. Let's try the other version. Even with completely redoing the hard drive to EXT4 with an MBR partition table, we don't get a boot. 
So let's change to the other Android x86 thing that we can install. There we go. So going back to the regular x86 one for 32-bit actually made it work. Now this is interesting because this piece of junk only has 4 gigs of RAM, so I don't know if the 4 gig thing might be the reason why the x64 doesn't work. But we're back to the problem that we had the last time I tried running this. Android on screen number one, nothing on screen number two except the cursor. So when this gets a bit further into the install, I want to see exactly whether we can ever have a second screen or not. Because that's the big, or if it flips screens if I close the lid. That's the biggest issue with using one of these things for running Android games. Is, well, <laughs> you know, do you really want just this little screen? I mean, this is, this was a 10 inch netbook, I think, 11 inch maybe. So there are tablets about this size that'll give you the same results, and all you have to do is hook up your keyboard and mouse via Bluetooth. But that's another discussion entirely. Let's see what this thing does. We're in. <laughs> now, let's find out how much of a waste of time this has been. Okay, so Geekbench is up and running, but before we begin the benchmark, there's one very specific reason why I do not have very high hopes for Android x86, besides needing to be a computer enthusiast to install it. As far as the uses I have for mobile devices, there's Android gaming, and there is also serving as an upload station for YouTube videos. I have my old tablet on upload station duty with a set of Bluetooth peripherals, so I can basically use an old tablet like a computer, and leave it plugged in all the time to take care of all the uploading and not use any CPU resources on anything else. So this is the next so this is the next thing that I could that I originally was considering using for uploading YouTube videos. But right now it's at 18 watts. And that's only because I unplugged the HDMI because it wasn't going out to two different screens. Android's made for single screen devices like tablets, so I I probably would have to do some serious tinkering to maybe have a chance of having a second screen. So besides the fact that I'm playing on a smaller screen, 18 watts. So you know that this is an 18 watt device. Let's run the CPU benchmark. See how much higher that goes. Oh yeah, we're already going into the 20s with the uh, kilowatt here. So 20 watt device. For what? For performance versus an LG Phoenix 4 phone running Android Oreo. Okay, about 18 watts. Ready for the disappointment? Here are the results of Geekbench on Android x86 on Rubbish. 539 and 800. Meanwhile, on a real phone, 652 and 1749 on an LG Phoenix 4 running Android Oreo. Some of this, of course, is the direct result of this only being a dual-core processor, but, uh... <laughs> Humiliation. So those kinds of numbers with about 20 watts draw versus if you could solve your screen problem with an Android device and just use it with Bluetooth peripherals, those kinds of numbers, 2.8 watts when charging. You don't mess with the Qualcomm Snapdragon. <laughs> and that's the issue here. The most that Android x86 can really be used for is to find some kind of use for an old computer. And that's really the extent of it. But once you get past the screen restrictions of something like a phone, you can just plug in a phone and do your thing and get better results. Because the Qualcomm Snapdragon is made for bang for buck performance. Which makes me wonder when the rest of the computer world, including bigger machines, is going to see, is going to see some kind of bang for buck improvement with something like this. But neither of these numbers is anything worth crying over. If you really want to see some really awesome Android performance, neither of these solutions is the best one. Monolith. Emulating Android Nougat through Bluestacks. 3313 single core, 5485 multi core. Booyah Skylake! Ooh! X-Bone controllers can pair up to an Android x86 device? Hmm... Blinky blinky! Well, not anymore, actually. Wow! Cool! Okay, the native bridge is on. Let's teeter-totter this on top of this speaker thingy that I have. See if we can get the screen in here and see what plays. Sort of go. No go. 
even with the native bridge to bridge between x86 and ARM. This is where the processor is going to start getting in the way, which is sad because I know this works on emulation. Sonic the Hedgehog! Yay! This crappy netbook can sort of handle it. I'm actually getting lag. <laughs> but I can use the Xbox controller. <laughs> I can use the Xbox controller to play the Android version of Sonic. I'm not playing with the touch screen, so uh, I hope this does it. <laughs> uh, restore purchase? No, oh, I want to go back to the game. Continue. Oh, cool! I got it's gone. All right, now we got ourselves a bit of a Genesis experience going on here. Except I'm not used to playing this on something smaller than a TV. Woo! I'm not going to be all that great at this game because um, the ring, the ring, get the ring! Woo! -hoo! I grew up on the Super Nintendo side of things, but I did have. Okay, that's a little slower than on the Genesis. But I did have some friends with Genesis, and one time I took one of my Atari 7800 controllers over. <laughs> and I actually played this game with an Atari joystick. <laughs> ah. <sighs> yeah, I'm about, I'm decades too late on being any good at this. Cool. So I guess a lot of the Sega classics will work on this, as long as nothing's running in the background. And you don't mind commercials. <laughs> this might actually be a little more accurate for an old arcade game. <laughs> oh man, rubbish cannot handle Pac-Man. That is bad. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of arcade cabinets would have the tube monitor at this angle. I forgot that. <laughs> uh. Nope, forget it. Not gonna work. Epic fear. Crazy Taxi. No go. Real Racing 3 and Hungry Shark Evolution will not work. So I think that's where our little experiment is going to end. Because if all these games are not working in Android x86, even with the native bridge enabled, then I think emulation remains the better option with Bluestacks. Plus, there'll be higher performance and stuff like that based on the uh, benchmark results. We'll check those out later on. For now, though, I want to take all these games off and turn this into a simple YouTube viewer, which is the simplest task that I can give to this thing. Can I at least use it to watch a video? No. It's not handling it. It's not maintaining the frame rate. And it's lagging. All good things must come to an end. Nope. Even my lack of tech videos. Wait, that was a good thing? Whatever. The yep, see the lag? Multimedia J. Stop. We're done. This cannot do anything involving video either. So rubbish has lived up to its name. It's good for what? Playing Sonic? I'm done with this nonsense. Waste of a computer, waste of an Android install. Epic fear. So there, after all this time, is my final answer with Android x86. Finally got it working on this thing, and the results were... rubbish. <laughs> this computer continues to live up to its name. I don't know, maybe I should put some kind of really low-profile Linux on it, if there's any way to use it as some kind of piece of network hardware or something. But what a waste of an SSD to do so. 120 gigs totally going to waste if I do that, or 160... Yeah. I forgot where I put my... Uh, Actually, no, I think the uh, silver bullet wound up with the really, really, really old SSD. Bottom line, though, this was a total waste. It can't even do anything above and beyond. So, all this talk about all this talk about Android x86 being more lightweight than Windows 10, this thing still struggled with playing YouTube videos in Android x86, just the same way that it struggles with them in Windows 10. So even as a nerd bedroom TV, this machine still can't handle that kind of stuff. Maybe if there's a lightweight distro of Linux, perhaps, but otherwise, well, rubbish continues to live up to its name. Till next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.